Uh, hi, everyone. I hope you're uh, enjoying your last uh, conference day. I mean, before the spring days and stuff. Um, so today I want to, um, to show you um, a tool, a specific tool um, for uh, Python developments um, that can help you um, help you out debugging and uh, developing your application uh, from your development environment to um, uh, to uh, staging and production and beyond. Uh, <clears throat> so this specific tool, well, uh, is uh, called uh, a profiler uh, specifically. And uh, so I'm going to, um, to talk about uh, Blackfire. Uh, itself, which is a profiler and monitoring tool. Um, so first, well, I'm so Jérôme Vieidon, and I'm a developer advocate at Blackfire.io. Uh, so that will be, uh, I will take on tour on on um, on what you can do with Blackfire and uh, how it can be useful for you. The goal here is to um uh, to make your your development life easier uh and uh so that you can focus on on what really matters for you for developing your applications and specifically to jump code so for this i'm gonna first share my screen of course here we go right um so as i um explained just before um Blackfire is uh, first and foremost the profiling tool. Uh, like many others in the Python ecosystem, I know I know that there are several um, uh, profilers, open source profilers uh, in in the Python world. Uh, here, uh, I will try to explain uh, what can dis differentiate these tools from Blackfire. Uh, first, Blackfire is a tracing uh, profile uh, profiler. It means that um, it will take traces from every functions that are executed in your code. Um, how it is, how it works, it, um, you have two main components. Um, first here, we can see in the middle, the probe. The probe is the component, uh, it's a PIP package uh, for, for your Python application um, that will gather all the data coming from the Python engine. Um, so we get, uh, when we uh, talk about data, it's uh, how how long functions took, uh, how long Python uh, was waiting for external uh, things to happen, like uh, file system operations or um, uh, database queries and stuff like that. So that's what we call input output. Uh, how long um, you had on CPU time, I mean, compute, real computation, how much memory you took, et cetera, et cetera. And this for each and every functions uh, from your application. Um, so that's the first component that, that needs to be installed uh, like any other pip package. Uh, it's written in C, so everything, every binding is uh, uh, in C so that it's the fastest possible. Uh, the only um, things in Python will, would be the, the SDK uh, to, so that you can like uh, interact directly with, uh, with the probe to enable profiling. Uh, very important thing to know about the probe in, is that uh, it is completely production safe. You can and well, you should actually <laughs> install it in production because um, uh it when it's it's always an on-demand provider uh it means that when um unless you you don't ask for a profile it does nothing it stays completely inert and when you do ask for a profile uh the, of course there would be an overhead because you know um uh, measuring things uh, from from within uh, uh, from within the Python engine, even if it's very fast, it always comes with a cost. Uh, but this cost, this overhead will won't uh, 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 affect your end users in any way because it's always on demand. When you ask a profile, the profile will only be for you and um, the other users will don't know that there is a profiler and that's your profiling. Uh, so no overhead at all. Uh, 
The second component you can see here is uh, called the agent. The agent is, is a daemon that just sits there and waits for, for uh, raw data from the probe uh, to, because the, the probe, in order to limit, to limit the, um, uh, the, the overhead, won't do the aggregation stuff, uh, ag aggregating the data and stuff like that. Uh, they will, it, it, the probe collects raw data and then sends, uh, sends this raw data to the agent, which lies into your infrastructure as well. It can be in a dedicated container, uh, you, you then usually um, a Docker container or uh, within your Kubernetes pod or whatever fancy. Um, you just only need one agent and the agent will uh, take this uh, raw data, aggregates them because we take samples, uh, 10 samples to, to have proper average. We'll see that in a minute. Um, and um, then we'll anonymize uh, sensitive data such as uh, um, external HTTP requests with tokens and stuff like that and SQL queries uh, uh, so that, yeah, well, things are quite, um, uh, uh, straightforward and uh, good to uh, uh, good to exploit for you. Uh, and the agent, when it's done, is uh, uploading the aggregated profile to Blackbird servers. Uh, so that's the basics, let's say. Uh, so here, well, um, um, this is the same application. If you already followed the, the workshop, you would uh, find this quite familiar. This is a very small application written in Django. Uh, it's like a, a blog-like application. From, um, so here it's all about uh, hunting the Bigfoot. <laughs> uh, so instead of articles, we are writing sightings, uh, reporting sightings of the Bigfoot and uh, members of the club can uh, comment this out, each sighting out. Um, so here we are on, on the detail page and we're still in production. You can see I'm here uh, uh, locally, I'm running the development web server, the manage.py run server. Um, so pure, um, pure uh, development environment. And well, before commenting and, de and deploying, I want to understand uh, where I could have uh, uh, performance bottlenecks or, uh, where, or maybe more, much simpler understand how my application is behaving uh, exactly. Because, you know, um, when you're, you're running your code, uh, your, your application is becoming kind of a black box. You cannot, uh, you cannot really know, unless you're profiling, uh, you cannot really know what's happening within. Because uh, when you're writing code, you're writing like the blueprints. Uh, but when everything is running through uh, the, 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 ser the run server uh, from uh, Django uh, development server or with G Unicorn, uh, well, then you do not have any uh, insights. And this is exactly what a profiler is about. A profiler like Blackberry, it gives, it gives you like binary glasses to know, to, to see exactly what's going on. So to trigger profile here, I'm I just have to uh, click on this uh, very big red button to uh, to to get started from my um, my Firefox extension. It's also available for Chrome, um, and I just need to be authenticated. So let's click on it. And when I click uh, to to trigger a profile, it's taking like I said ten samples, so it can to zero to one hundred percent, and then averaging things. And now I have the summary of the, the, the profile for this page. Uh, well, I have like uh, different dimensions there. So wall time, which is the overall uh, time execution uh, for this page uh, in your application, which is all uh, split into two flavors. The first one is the IO time. So as uh, I mentioned earlier, uh, it's a time spent by Python waiting for other operations from the, from the operating system. Uh, so it might be file system, uh, it might be network, network calls, HTTP requests, and, uh, well, stuff like that. Uh, the second one is the CPU time. So the actual computation time when Python is really doing something. The memory. So uh, very important aspect. Well, external HTTP request, well, here we have none, and SQL queries. Um, and then we have two uh, kind of visualizations available. 
So I will first click on the timeline. So the timeline view is um, a visualization of the profile uh, on a time base. So this is quite unusual to uh, most providers. Uh, most providers are um, uh, only um, showing interaction between functions or lines and stuff like that. And we, if I, with Blackfire, you will be able to have this as well. This is actually the main one. But um, as a developer, usually you have, um, well, this is my case at least, I have the representation of the, uh, the profile of how my, my application is behaving on over time. Uh, I know that well. I enter here from my whiskey um, from my whiskey uh, uh, scripts, and then I'm going to my Django view, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and you get this uh, visualization thanks to the timeline view. If you're already familiar to um, uh, flame graphs, this is kind of similar, except that here, uh, well, it's like a reverse flame graph. I like to call them pit graphs. <laughs> Uh, and well, the, the deeper the pits, the uh, the more complex your application uh, is basically. And each block here represents the function call. So we have all the middlewares from um, uh, Django here, getting to the whiskey handler, uh, and here, well, the our view, and um, well, uh, goes going to templates and to. Uh, uh, um, SQL queries from Django models, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, all the blocks are proportional to the time spent. So uh, the longer the block, the longer the function took, right? Um, and with this representation, you can um, quite easily spot uh, where from within your application, you can have um, performance issues here. So for example, there, uh, I can see that these two template blocks uh, are quite, um, take a lot of time, right? It's really long. Uh, here it's citing show.html, uh, which is taking oh, 564 milliseconds, which is almost all the time for all the requests because uh, we are here on 600 milliseconds. Uh, so there might be something to, to have a look at. I can click on it and to get the whole call stack and understand well from where it's going. Well, here it's very straightforward one time. You can see that it's coming from my, uh, my, my settings show uh, jungle view. All right. Um, <clears throat> so uh, an another very interesting uh, part of this uh, view is the blue graph in the background. The, this blue graph represents the, the memory consumption growing, right? The peak memory, actually, the peak memory, which is uh, the envelope, which is growing over time. Uh, and this is a very uh, interesting, um, interesting graph because uh, from this uh, blue graph, you could easily spot memory leaks and thus uh, um, issues, uh, performance issues introduced by uh, too much memory consumption, consumption. So it's always good to have an eye on this graph. Um, also, well, timeline metrics. Metrics are combinations of uh, an aggregation of functions that are uh, related to a domain, specific domain. Uh, those uh, are actually automatically gathered by Blackfire itself. You don't have to do anything here to make them appear. Uh, so we can see that, uh, well, for the query sets, uh, uh, we have 70 uh, calls re uh, re uh, bound to uh, uh, query sets. Uh, and it, it took, uh, well, 50, uh, five, more than 500 uh, milliseconds. So we definitely have an issue with, uh, with this metric. And we can see that thanks to the color code in pink, we had a lot of calls there. Uh, so yeah we definitely have an issue uh, and send for well Django templates and Django views etc cetera, etc cetera. all right so that was for uh, for, for this one um, then well I have these representations uh, of, of the the profiles um, 
from the different dimensions. And this is quite important because uh, uh, you can see that uh, not, if I do not zoom, I can see um, where, what is my critical path. This is something very useful to find bottlenecks. When you find these kind of guys uh, of nodes, well, this is where it's really intense. And well, actually it's been called more than uh, almost 1000 times. So then our goal is to understand well, where it's coming from and get, getting up uh, uh, and see where it's coming from from my application. What triggers, what's, what is the butterfly uh, effect uh, where it came from? So, well, here, clearly this is uh, coming from this, uh, from this jungle uh, model function uh, coming from a specific uh, um, template tags. Right, uh, you can see um, here that uh, you, you have a different representation uh, of the call graph depending on how on, on which dimension you focus on. And so with only one profile, you will be able to see I um, have different aspects of, of the behavior of the application. Okay. Same here with database queries. Uh, so have a list of the different database queries. All right, this, uh, you would do uh, um, quite often during your development cycle, right? To understand what's going on, to find um, memory leaks or performance bottlenecks. But then let's say you're done, uh, right? It's time for deployment, and you have installed everything uh, in um, everything needed uh, in um, uh, in production in your production service. Uh, and well, this is what I've done here. I've deployed, I deployed, uh, sorry, I had <laughs> issues here. Okay, thank, thank you, Gala.town. <laughs> sorry. Um, uh, so uh, I've deployed uh, on uh, here on Platform SH, actually. Uh, this is uh, on the cloud platform with a container. Uh, and this is my final thing. But now, well, uh, I, I, my supposition, my guess is that I fixed everything, right? Uh, but um, I cannot be so sure. And this is where monitoring comes into place because um, I, I, I'd like to know how my application is behaving. Um, I mean, with real end user traffic and uh, to understand if I did everything correctly. This is the point of monitoring. You probably know or probably uh, already know different uh, monitoring tools uh, with different services that uh, <coughs> like, well, I can cite uh, Datadoc or your Relic on this kind of tools, um, that which are very, um, very complex tools and very useful, yeah, definitely. Well, if you use them, uh, that's that's oh, that's fine as well. But here, I wanted to show you how uh, Blackberry monitoring can help you. So here, yeah, this is the same application, right? It's it's supposed to be uh, super optimized. Well, so now then, I want to show you this. So uh, here, I'm on my Blackberry account. And uh, the, the first thing, uh, as I um, uh, subscribe to my uh, to Blackberry monitoring, uh, I want to know uh, how my application, uh, how good is uh, the health of my application. And so this is the first dashboard you, you're getting, um, the health report. And the health report will gather will uh, uh, extract key information uh, from every request coming through uh, your Python uh, application. So here it's pure Django. Um, and uh, everything is going through the, the same probe and agent goes to, to the, there is nothing specific to do actually. If you already installed for profiling, you're good to go for monitoring. Uh, and I can see here that from the last week, well, I have very few <laughs> traffic, right? Uh, I have, uh, well, in, in average, um, 96 percentile is, well, 155 milliseconds and a major response time to 60 milliseconds. And I can see the evolution of it. Uh, 
uh, the number of requests, and also very just interesting, the number of errors you might have. Well, this one is pretty empty. Uh, so I'm going to show you um, uh, an another one, uh, which is not in Python. I'm sorry about that. It's uh, to get more data to show you, but you get the idea. It, I mean, it's exactly the same. But, uh, and uh, about monitoring here, you would see the uh, most impactful transaction. And this, this is key, because um, when, you, when you have your, your application live, uh, well, usually you get, you know, analytics, uh, and uh, if you have already monitoring all logs, you might know where most of your users are going through. Um, but here with the monitoring and the impactful transactions, you will get very precise um, uh, information about which transaction and uh, which transaction, which is actually an identified request, um, which transaction is the most impactful for users. Um, so here we only have two, well, I don't have many pages here, but uh, I, we can see that uh, the, the, the different the response time distribution uh, on, this, uh, on these uh, uh, transactions and where we have uh, HTTP status, uh, uh, um, sorry, uh, distribution per um, HTTP status. And here, for example, the uh, 500s, the, the number of errors, um, which then I can go to the monitoring uh, itself. And go so uh, here I, can, I get the different graphs uh, of um, to, to help me select the timeline itself um, and to 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 understand what what went wrong at some point maybe uh, and to be able to filter out uh, here down to the transactions and these transactions then I can click here to see the, the same kind of um, uh, of information dedicated on the transaction themselves. And also, if we're jumping to some to, to uh, another one having uh, more information, you can see that we also have spans. Uh, the spans, well, here we have a lot of spans, especially because we have a lot of, uh, well, quite so few middlewares. It's, this gives you like, it's uh, like a mini timeline. Uh, it gives you uh, an overview of what kind of component, uh, software components are um, interacting with each other, uh, just like you were seeing uh, with the, the timeline view. But here it, we're um, uh, more on the surface, but you can still see overall what's going on. Right, so now I'm gonna switch to a more uh, extensive one. Uh, so. This is basically Blackfire.io website, right? So I have a full um, health report uh, live, which with real end user data and stuff. Uh, so that can help me uh, show you, well, here the number of requests and the things I already showed you. Also, the successful builds, which is another, um, uh, another feature from Blackfire, what is what we call uh, the uh, synthetic user monitoring uh, based on uh, scenarios. I'll quickly show you this before getting back again uh, to the health report. You, you can define scenarios in a YAML file at the, the, the root of your code base and uh, in order to, uh, to test um, on a regular basis here uh, using periodic builds, uh, like each hour validates that my scenarios are uh, meeting are my expectations. I won't get into details about it because I don't have time for this, I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, you have like different con constraints uh, here, like uh, about on the memory itself, uh, on the number of secret queries, um uh etc etc the number of tags that are well, different things that you can define uh that you can test uh and uh, to, for to to validate uh your performance profile okay um and this is important because this data is actually key for your health report we because uh, uh here in in this section in build and test 
Now you will um, you will see which well Blackfire will extract which transactions are uh, not tested by this kind of uh, scenarios. And if you have quite uh, high expectation, I mean, um, uh, impactful transactions uh, that are not tested, well, it means that you really should test them by, by this mean. Because uh, these um, uh, synthetic, these builds, uh, they do profiles on each every step. Uh, while monitoring, it's uh, are not profiling anything uh, unless once a day, and I will come to that. Right. So here we have quite a, uh, quite a few um, um, impactful transactions with time distribution, and also the top recommendations. This is something that um, uh, is part of the the, the profiler. Um, here, it, well, it's all about PHP, but uh, if I can have a look at this uh, YAML parsing that should be cached in production. Yeah, uh, well, at least it depends on how it's it's taken into account but uh, by, by the language. But uh, here, uh, we, we definitely have uh, uh, issues with that because we have to interpret the YAML file or hear about the secret queries or ORM entities. Uh, uh, more, uh, too many uh, ORM entities that have been created. And I can view it within the, the, the last profile that triggered this recommendation. This is what we had here, right? Uh, we had also this part in our Python profile, like here. Oops, I didn't uh, enable the cache template loader because I still have the debug flag. So this is actionable, directly actionable. You have this recommendation, you can definitely fix this. Even if it's in production, you can see it right away. Uh, okay. Let's go back in. Okay, then for the monitoring, as I said, uh, here you can uh, visualize um, the graph, uh, I mean, the, your application's constants. Um, on the y-axis, you have two y-axis. On, on the left y-axis, you have uh, time uh, for each request, um, and so the, the basic wall time and the memory consumption. You can switch. Uh, from uh, one another. And on the right y-axis, you have the RPMs, which are the re number of requests handled per minute. This, or you can switch to the server load, like you know the, the one reported by top command, for instance, and the, the uh, bandwidth output. So this can help you do a selection. So I already do, did a, a selection. You can also uh, see that these vertical bars, these vertical bars are actually events that have been triggered, like uh, to uh, when you deploy something, you uh, you want to know if it had an imp a positive or negative impact on the overall monitoring and um, uh, not the monitoring on your application. So you so that you can have uh, you know cue points. Yeah, okay, here I I did a deploy. Did it degrade the, the performance? Yes or no? Um, and this is specifically what it's all about, is all this virtual lots of events. Uh, then you can filter out my HTTP status uh, by response time distribution as well. So we can see that, we, yeah, we have like uh, more than 100, uh, more than 1,000 uh, requests that are uh, 1.6 seconds long. So that's, uh, that's not good. So I can click to filter this out. And then the response time visualization changes automatically to show, well, here the 96th percentile. It means that uh, here the 96th percentile is 12 seconds. So it means that uh, everything that is below 96% of the, all the requests are below 12 seconds. Uh, and the median time is five seconds. So that's quite long, actually. And then, well, I have the top transactions. Uh, so a transaction, as I said, is um, uh, identified request. Uh, we're not talking about request anymore here. And they're sorted by impact. Uh, so here, 80% uh, impact for the first one here, which is public keys actions. It means this is uh, something, uh, an operation uh, when you, uh, that is triggered when you want to trigger a profile. It checks all signatures to, uh, to keep everything safe. And I can see that I also had 44 errors. So 
that's not good. Maybe we should have a look at it. And if I, if I click here, I, I, I keep all my uh, filters uh, to understand what's dedicated to this very transaction, right? And I even have SQL, uh, uh, SQL queries here that are being extracted. Well, this is a, an upcoming feature. Uh, that I'm showing. And the, the spans, so the spans, that's um, that the mean timeline that are extracted from uh, extended traces, that, that's usually 1% of all the traces, uh, to, to show you how your application is behaving. But what is mostly important is here, the automatic profiling. So, here, from this part, you will get the, the possibility to treat your profiles yourself from real end user traffic. So, because sometimes you you know you don't you cannot really reproduce uh, how um, how things are going, and actually, BlackFire monitoring for um, just do uh, automatic profiling for you on the every day uh, for the top ten. Um, uh, uh, top, top most, sorry, uh, impactful requests, uh, most impactful transactions. So every day, uh, mon uh, Blackfire monitoring will trigger profiles, and this is uh, what monitoring, uh, monitoring automatic profiling is about. So you don't have to do anything, and I can then click on it and inspect what was going on to understand, well, uh, yeah, what, what, where can be the problem, and well, you can also see, say. Well, actually, I want to uh, to profile the next request coming through this the uh, um, uh, this tr uh, transaction. Let's click on it, and then the next time a user comes through this transaction, um, a profile will be generated, and you will be able still to understand what how your application was behaving. Let's see if it worked here uh, less than one minute ago. That's that's me. So. Everything here with, uh, are, is tightly coupled, so that with with a, uh, a logic within the things. Uh, monitoring can lead to to uh, to profiling, and profiling can lead then to monitoring to, uh, from dev to production to give you real actionable impact. Uh, and and one of the best example is the recommendations I already shown, um, and um, okay, yeah. You keep um, uh, be, you keeping the um, control on uh, how your application is behaving from development to product for to production. Uh, that was uh, me speaking very fast because there is always a lot to show, uh, and so well, I hope you enjoyed it, and. Um, I'm, I would be very happy to take any questions, uh, either from uh, the from Slack or um, at our booth. And oh yeah, um, about uh, Blackfire monitoring for um, Python, we're currently in a beta stage, and we're currently uh, looking for beta testers. So if you're interested to uh, to do the beta test with us. Uh, please, yeah, come come by our booth and let's discuss. Uh, uh, we have a form where I cannot share the link here, but I will drop it in the second in the, in Slack. Um, to if you if you're interested, so that we can contact them, contact you afterwards. Thank you for your attention, ladies and gentlemen.